Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. Hello and welcome to the Pop Turnative Podcast. It's the podcast and talk show where we have digital discussions from the worlds of TV, film, pop culture, social media. Everything really depending on the guests. We talk about it all. As always, I'm your host, Peter Meliotis, on social media. You know me as Peter Beats. You will recognize my guests from some TV shows on some films, TV show Nurses, which is on Global in Canada, and a horror film called The Possession, and she's done other really cool things. We were with Natasha Callis. Natasha, welcome to Pop Alternative. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited to chat with you. Um, you've done a lot of really cool things in the realms of TV and film, so I'm really excited to do this. And uh, I have been interviewing your friends in the industry as well, so I I heard you were, you were left out a little bit, so I'm happy we were able to do this. I was. I was getting very left out. I'm happy that you, you finally reached out to me. But real talk, and Tristan DiLala w- could attest to this, like this is like two, three months ago, I did mention we were doing like an Instagram Live, and I did mention that I wanted to interview you because of your work in the horror landscape as well. So I just want to say I wanted to have you on for a you know- while. I did see that. I was watching his live and I saw that and I was like very flattered. So okay, you did see that. that. Okay, cool. Yeah, <laughs> I absolutely. Did, I did. I'm just giving you a hard time. Before we get into that, you know, whether you act, whether you, whether people sing, whether they write, they direct, they create, they're all storytellers. When did Natasha Callis decide that she wanted to be a storyteller? I was honestly, it sounds super cheesy and lame, but I, I really feel like I was just born a storyteller. Mm-hmm. Like before I even knew what acting was i was acting and storytelling and so it came very early on at a very early age i would be i would find a movie and i would just like become obsessed with it and i would study it and i would i would kind of break it down and then i'd choose a character and i'd recreate that character and dress like them and i'd go to school and i'd get everybody to call me by this character's name and so it was really hilarious that i was doing this just very intuitively and and didn't even know you know that it what acting was at this point i was like six or five or four you know like super young so yeah it just kind of um came naturally i guess i mean you get to play pretend for a living if you think about it it's pretty cool (laughs) it's pretty cool i know it's it's really it's it's amazing it's my biggest passion for sure so i'm really lucky so we're gonna chat about a few things specifically nurses a show uh canadian show we are both canadian um you're from the vancouver area i'm from montreal originally i live in ottawa right now let's be honest growing up television and film in canada had that stigma that it wasn't as good or as popular as programs from you know the united states that stigma i feel like has gone completely because there's amazing content being shot in canada featuring canadian actors do you agree with that oh absolutely yeah i'm so so proud to be on a canadian show Mm -hmm. um i was actually talking to our our showrunner about this how like yeah you're right like canadian canadian tv gets a bad rep um it's this stigma like you know the quality the the, what whatever it is it has a bad rep for whatever reason Mm -hmm. and i i definitely think we're you know not we not me but like i think that barrier is being yeah we're breaking the barrier for sure especially in comedy too like i was talking to jordan um jordan johnson hines about this who plays keon in in nurses review um he He's also an upload. He's been on Suits um, as well. And it's just amazing what he's kind of accomplished. And we were talking about, um, like, look at Shit's Creek. Look at Working Moms. Look at Kim's Convenience. Letter Candy. These are all sh- Canadian shows. It, absolutely. With yeah, international distribution. Sure. And there's people all over the place that are watching them. Yeah. It's amazing. It's great. I'm really, I'm really happy. And I'm so proud to be a part of a Canadian show. And I'm a proud Canadian. And it's, it's, it's great to be able to work up here. What have you noticed about working on nurses? I mean, it's a medical drama. Um, It's the people that created Rookie Blue, which is one of my favorite shows. Um, And I feel like that's a show that people don't realize is Canadian either. Because I freaking love that show. I love that show. (laughs) Yeah. Um, And Saving Hope as well, actually. Absolutely. So those shows, it's the same people. So what, 
what is it about nurses, in your opinion, that makes it um, kind of work? Because I feel like there's a lot of recipes. The cast, I feel like, is is amazing, but there's the storylines are really good as well. I also think it looks good. I think from the cinematography point of view, it, it shot really nice as well. So what do you like? Do you think it's kind of all those elements working together, so to speak? Yeah, I think we have a really um, incredible team behind us. These guys are, you know, like you, like you say, Rookie Blue, Saving Hope. These people know what they're doing. And I think there's this trust that all of us cast have with our creators and with the crew behind us, our producers, our directors, and everybody, just that we're all a really um, kind of working machine we all work and trust each other and we're all so passionate about it i think that's also something that is really important and yep. kind of you know shines through um and um presents itself when, when you're watching it we're all so passionate about this project and about the stories that we're telling um and I think it's freaking time that nurses get their own show. I mean, there's definitely a lot of medical dramas out there, but they're always focused on, on the doctors and, you know, they, they don't really shine light on, on the nurses. And I think, you know, now more than ever before this pandemic broke out, you know, we, we were filming this. But now I think nurses are kind of getting, and frontline workers are getting the credit that they deserve. And now we have the opportunity in season two to shine a light on all of these stories that are so relevant right now. No, for sure. Um, did you have to do you and the cast have to do a lot of I actually didn't ask Jordan and Donald this, so this is like maybe I asked Jordan You're this like be before. Now. Well yeah, no, I'm just talking about the, the research aspect of things. Like obviously you are all not nurses. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. <laughs> so yeah, was yeah. the was it was it a heavy load of research that went into the roles on nurses? I think we all kind of did our own um own bit of research going into it um and then i mean i watched it was actually kind of a coincidence because when i first got the audition and when i first became aware of the project i was binging gray's anatomy for the very first time ever and you know i've all of my friends were geeking out about it for the longest time and, and i was like okay I have some downtime. I'm going to finally like start this show. And then, you know, a week later I get, I get the call for nurses. I was like, Oh, okay. So I kind of had like a little bit of yeah. Grey's Anatomy, this world, the lingo kind of, I was starting to study that a little bit. But yeah. um, when we all came in, when we all got cast and we all flew to Toronto, we had a week of medical training. Um, it was, it wasn't necessarily a week, but it was like a, we had a week of prep and then in that week of prep we we had our medical training and we have an onset doctor named josh who's amazing and he kind of led this um this educational little thing where we all learned cpr and we learned how to um administer ivs and kind of the footing and and the basic kind of let's all pretend like we know what we're doing and let's all look like we know what we're doing. So he kind of taught us how to, you know, do stuff like that. But, and, and then he's always on set um, and we have like medical blockings um, before every scene and he shows sure. us what to do and we have, he can, he can answer any of our questions. So. That's interesting for sure. Another interesting thing about nurses that I want to say, this is what I find really cool and important in terms of the marketing and promotion of it as well. So in mm -hmm. The world of music there are terms called super groups where it's people that join a band that have been in previous big bands before that so they say mm -hmm. featuring members of this band this band this band super group right mm -hmm. the cast of nurses is kind of based on the past projects you have all worked on mm -hmm. a little bit of a super group for a canadian show and it is incredible because you look at Tierra with her work on Riverdale and she's on Dirty John coming up. You look at your work yeah. in films like The Possession. Jordan's been in Suits. He's in Upload right now. He's been on Blind Spot. Donald um, is working on the, uh, the Craft, but has also been in, you know, Working Moms. Sandy mm -hmm. has been in Grey's Anatomy. Have you ever thought about that? That it's like a super group cast a little bit. <laughs> it is pretty cool. Yeah, we're we're definitely really lucky to have everybody that we have they're all you know pros and they have quite quite the resumes each of them so yeah we're very lucky to to have the group that you the super group if you well, it's, it, have you, it's true though right like you've all you I mean, yeah i know there's sure. a lot of people that's like oh you're up and coming and i know a, a few of you like this is kind of like the like your first kind of like 
regular series roles, some of you, but like at the same time, you've worked on some pretty amazing projects before that. And there's a lot of shows mm -hmm. um, that happen, like Outer Banks on Netflix. I talked to a lot of those cast members. I mean, this is their first break, essentially. Yeah. For but sure. this was a show that kind of got an opportunity to say, look at the cast you have. Like, you'll recognize some of these people from other things, right? So I thought, from, I'm a, I'm a communications marketing guy, so I thought that was kind of interesting to talk about a little bit, you know? Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. No, yeah, they're all they're all very very talented. We're we're super lucky. All right, so the time so the time has come to talk about what I wanted to talk about and what you want to talk about as well is, is your work in the horror film genre. Um, obviously, this is a genre that I love. It holds closely to my heart. Um, you were in the Possession, which is an excellent film. Um, it. It's the it's the it's the time for horror films right now. Like the last five years has just been kind of so important for the genre. The genre keeps changing. The genre keeps evolving, and it's not all about the cheap jump scares anymore. There's other ways to scare people. What do you like specifically about the horror genre in the last kind of like five years, Natasha? In the in the last five years, I like. Um... It's kind of interesting. It is ever changing because. They, there was the shaky camera found footage stint for a little bit there, which I don't know if I was a huge fan of it, but there was that. And then now we're kind of working our way more into films like Hereditary yep. and um, Midsommar you know, Man, the remake. Yeah, Midsommar, yeah, exactly. So more kind of like psychologically. Yeah. Effing your head up, yeah. you know, so yeah. Um, which I'm a really big fan of. I know we kind of talked about this a little bit, but um, I used to be a huge, huge horror film, kind of in the possession days and even before. Like, I remember eight years old was the first time that I watched The Exorcist, which really messed me up for a little bit there. It was like just... And I don't even know if I could watch that now. Like, I think as I've gotten older and as things... As I'm more aware and... I don't know. I feel like I'm more gullible now, <laughs> like even yeah. more so than when I than when I was younger. So I'll watch a movie and I'll like all of a sudden become paranoid, or you know, I have my own house now, so I'm like hearing things and I don't have mom and dad to to. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Can you can yeah. Sleep with me? Hello, who's you know? there? <laughs> exactly. So I feel like I feel like I'm a little bit more of a scaredy cat now, which is why I appreciate less of the jump scares like jump scares and and the and goriness that i can't get out of my head at night and more so like um uh what was that who oh what's that movie with um um oh no oh what? um inception yeah that's or which is the one with no insidious um, no which one insidious? Yeah, yeah yeah insidious is that the one with the two the husband and wife and they come to the house. Annabelle or yeah, the con the conjuring. The, con the conjuring. But they're part yeah, of like yeah, the yeah, same yeah. like universe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I actually yeah. interviewed Lynn Shea from all the Insidious films. Oh, amazing! And I talked to her about this, and I'm like, you don't need the cheap jump scares anymore, like in your films. And she started laughing because because <laughs> like Insidious and Conjuring, there's a bunch of like, oh my god, you know what I mean? Oh, uh, terrifying! But like. Here's my here's what scares me though. Dinner party gone wrong scares me. People show up to a dinner party, they sit down, and then you look at certain characters and you're like, that person's acting really weird. What is going on with that person? Or like mm -hmm. that person said something and has triggered this guy and he's acting really freaky. Like that to me is what scares <laughs> me. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. What did you think of Get Out? It's a it's incredible. I loved Get Out. Yeah. I loved Us. I think Us was I love I, I, you saw us. Us. Yeah. That was shot. Like, did you see the cinematography of that? Beautiful, like amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I feel I like that's, that's what is drawing people to watch TV right now is what they what it yeah. looks like too, right? Yeah. And I think I think in the last five years, or and I could be wrong, but I've noticed that I think horror films are being shot so beautifully now, and in a way that's super like alluring and intriguing and captivating to watch. And you're like mesmerized by the beauty of it. Like Midsommar was a, like, you're, you're like, wow. Yeah. And then because everything seems so picture perfect, beautiful, when things go wrong, you're like, okay, this is, this is like 
everything is contradicting itself on screen and this is it's super it's captivating i'm in the works right now of like putting together like i've been thinking about all the movies that i've kind of seen like in the last couple of years and i need to put like a list because there are some films and a lot of them not many people talk about a lot that i need to kind of write down on the list you know what i mean to tell people totally. because there's such good movies out there like your nurses um cast man friend you know Tara Scovey was in a film called summer of 84 which mm-hmm. is not full out horror kind of has the like m- like it, it's like a mystery kind of like a serial killer mystery kind of story a little bit with the horror and the darkness in it but kind of has the stranger things vibes you know what i mean where it kind Ooh, of chronicles yeah. these kids and it is absolutely incredible and it's a must watch for everyone who's tuning into this podcast right now because I love that movie Terry does a great job in it the cast is amazing Caleb Emery who's in Hunters and who's in Good Girls is in it as well Grand Versher who's in um, Stargirl right now like it's just an amazing cast and wow. it's like no one really no one no one's really heard of it so I need to like put these all like on a list somewhere you know what I mean I think so I do I think you need to make like a, 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 a playlist have you seen The Invitation Cutie Beats playlist have you seen no, the invitation? I haven't. Okay, on Netflix. That you need to watch that. Because remember when I said okay. dinner party gone wrong? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, That's it's. I think I've heard of it actually. I do think I've I've seen it on Netflix. So I have to watch it. It's an amazing genre. Um, and we talked about it like The Invisible Man, which I saw recently. Like. I love that movie so much. So good, so good. It's very scary too. Like actually. No, absolutely. Yeah. Very it good. is amazing. Yeah. What are some projects you? It might you might have kind of we might have kind of crossed it off. Like, has there been any projects that you've kind of worked on that are kind of like projects in your wheelhouse in terms of the stuff that you kind of want to do as a storyteller? Like, what genre do you want to work on that you have already or that you haven't already worked on? Oh, good question. I, looking back at my career, I really appreciate the indies that I did when mm-hmm. I was younger. Oh, yeah. Um, I was in a movie called Donovan's Echo, um, written and directed by um, the, the amazing Jim Cliff, and um, and also Daydream Nation, which had Kat Dennings in it, um, and. And so I, I actually recently, I don't really ever watch anything that I've been in, but recently I was bored and we're in quarantine and what else are we going to do? So I kind of, my parents have this like bookshelf of they, my dad like will buy on Amazon, like hard copies of all the, you know, the things I've been in. So I dusted off the old DVD player and I <laughs> tossed in um, actually both Donovan's Echo and, and Daydreamation. And I really appreciate and want to... Um, as a storyteller, as a director, which I want to eventually get into, as well as writing. I want to tell these kind of coming of age, um, indie, like indies. I just, I don't know. I love, I have more of appreciation for indies now than I'm, than I'm older. That's sure. amazing. It's important to kind of wear many hats in the industry. Have you kind of noticed that a lot of people, like maybe yourself, like your friends or your colleagues that you're working on are like starting to kind of dive into like many different things now, rather than just kind of the one lane of acting? Like, I feel like everyone wants to try to do everything now. Absolutely. Yeah, I know. And it's a good thing. I'm not saying it as a bad thing. It's It's a great thing. Yeah, no, it's absolutely a great thing. I think that we all, you know, as actors, we it's it comes down to we love to storytell. Yep. And I think a lot of us have in common that we don't only want to storytell in front of the camera, but also tell our stories behind the camera. Right. Absolutely. I know that a lot of a lot of the nurses cast like Tiara, I know, wants to to direct Um, Donald is a visionary and is super <laughs> oh yeah he is <laughs> donald is just the coolest guy and he's so talented and creative and he's just like oozing with creativity and i know he's directing and he's doing his own thing and so um yeah i think it's super cool and it's something that i would love to i would love to get into too yeah no for sure yeah. tasha thank you so much for coming on pop turn of the chat i really enjoyed it Thanks for having me. It was so fun. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, so where can people kind of follow you on social media to keep up to date with everything? And of course, if they're in Canada, they can watch Nurses on Global. Um, but very soon, I think in 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 in, in some area, some some uh, in Africa and in Sweden, I believe we could watch Nurses soon too, right? Yeah, I think in Europe there's like a universal thing in Europe happening distribution 
execution. So I I don't know. I'm not. I'm, yeah. We'll, we'll but see. soon but we yeah. get, soon people are going to be able to see it kind of worldwide, which is awesome. Yeah, super exciting. And where can people follow you on social media to keep up to date with everything? Um, on Instagram and Twitter, my usernames are Natasha Callis. Very cool. Thank Just you so basic. thank you so much for doing this. And I'll get that list ready of uh, that that horror movie list ready. Okay, amazing. I look forward to it. Thank Absolutely. you for having me. Of course. Well, this has been Popternative, youtube.com slash popternative for previous episodes. And until next time, this is Natasha Callis on PD Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Popternative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Popternative on YouTube. Be sure to like Popternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.